These days, almost every automaker has an SUV or two in its lineup, but real off-roaders are still a rare breed. One that's been around for a while is Mercedes G-Class. Kennen Sie das Gefühl? Car tester Martis Curat feels like he's gone back in time. To when dinosaurs roamed the earth. He almost expects to see a Tyrannosaurus Rex pass by. Well, not exactly pass by. He feels like he's sitting inside a dinosaur. That being the Mercedes G-Class. He's just gotten into the newest edition, but Mattis says it doesn't feel as new as it looks. Technologically speaking, it's up to date, yet all of its modern driver assists and entertainment systems can't hide its age. Mattis says the G model dates back to 1979, a time when German vehicles didn't offer much in the way of space. They were all narrower, shorter and lower than today's models, though the interior was quite roomy for the time. Today he notices that it feels pretty cramped, even though the new model is around 8 centimeters wider than the old one. So space is limited. But the vehicle is bound to have other selling points, right? Mattis says the Mercedes G has one special talent. Just watch this. While going just 50 kilometers an hour, it can make the tires squeal just the way a Porsche 911 would when taking the same curve at 100 kilometers per hour. Now that's really something. Of course, the G500 can go faster than 50 kilometers an hour. Its 310 kilowatt, four liter V8 twin turbocharger can accelerate this wall unit on wheels to 210 kilometers per hour. And the G-Class can go from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in a respectable 5.9 seconds. Officially, fuel consumption is listed as 12 liters per 100 kilometers, but that's difficult or downright impossible to achieve in practice. Sitting so high up, Mattis has a great overview of the situation, yet he can barely remember the last time he was in a car with such a huge turning circle. But look on the bright side, he says. With this car, you can just drive over the curb if you can't turn in time. So the G-Class isn't a great vehicle for parking garages. But maybe it's just right for castle dwellers. Our car tester says the Mercedes G-Class is immediately recognizable. And the newest version won't change that. Its boxy shape and angular exterior contours simply make it like no other auto. Though, if you take a closer look, you can see there are some differences from the previous model. Even if many of the stylistic elements remain the same, like the upright windshield, the flat hood, and the distinctive side molding trim. Others have changed. There are new bumpers, headlights, and turn signals. The door edges are rounder too. You can hear the difference when closing them. The tail lights are flatter and use LED technology. And Mattis says if we go even further back to the 90s, the 80s, and to 1979, when this model was introduced 40 years ago, it looked completely different again. Practical features instead of smart chrome trim, that was an advantage when traveling cross-country. 
as were the 16-inch steel wheels, considered quite large back then. What hasn't changed over the years, the turn signals are still found on the front wings. And the spare tyre is still mounted on the back. Matty says both of these cars belong to Christian Wonkel, and so does this wonderful castle where we've been invited today. After the two men say hello, Christian Wonkel sets things straight. He says only the cars belong to him, but he does host weddings at the castle and likes to greet the guests. And today he's happy Mattis is here with a nice auto. Mattis comments that a castle in the G-Class aren't exactly things you need in daily life. Christian says he stayed true to the G-Class because he likes them. He uses the old Puch G model to take guests hunting and this one to drive wedding guests home. Mattis imagines getting into the G-Class in a flowing gown would be a tight squeeze. Christian admits there's not as much room as you'd think, so he hopes the new version will offer much more space. Oh. Christian finds it a little cramped. So does Mattis, even though he's shorter than Christian. Christian thinks the designers should have sacrificed a bit of cargo space to give passengers more leg room. Mattis agrees. But he says at least they have red seat belts. What he really doesn't like are these air vents. He thinks their round shape contradicts this boxy vehicle's entire concept. Christian suggests they sit up front and test things out. Matters even lets him drive. In the woods, it quickly becomes clear that the G-Class is much more than a trendy SUV for hauling groceries. Though Christian gives it a real workout in rugged terrain, the vehicle takes everything in its stride. Yeah, Christian. Mattis asks Christian what he thinks. He's thrilled and calls it a technological masterpiece. Is there such a big difference to what he has now? There's no comparison, Christian says. It drives like a dream. No bumps, nothing. It absorbs the bumps. But what good is that if the vehicle is seldom or never used off-road due to its high price or for fear of scratches and scrapes? With Aaron Fell's castle disappearing in the mirror behind him, Mattis delivers his verdict. He says he can understand Christian's enthusiasm. The Mercedes G-Class really is a great vehicle for driving off-road. Christian really wasn't driving slowly, yet Mattis didn't feel it go over any potholes or sticks and stones on the ground. He also didn't notice that at the front the rigid axle has been replaced by independent suspension, though in terms of off-road capabilities the G-Class still has three differential locks. So it's a great off-roader. But Mattis says Mercedes G-Class is also a great gas guzzler, so don't expect to match official fuel consumption. And even though it's gotten larger, the interior is still a tight fit. Plus, the vehicle is incredibly hard to manoeuvre. Mattis says lots of vehicles can do what the G-Class can and do it better. The only thing they don't have is the cult following. So Mattis advises buyers to look beyond the hype when purchasing a new vehicle.